fasten your seat belts and get ready today i am going to take you on a maiden flight to one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world Fasten your seat belts and get ready. Today I'm going to take you on a maiden trip to one of the most popular tourist destina destinations in the world. Fasten your seat belts and get ready. Today I'm going to take you on a maiden trip to one of the most popular tourist destinations of the world. A destination that is the gateway to the Himalayan heaven, one of the Himalayan heavens, like the Annapurna Himalayan range, the Muktinath temple, and many other natural as well as spiritual wonders. Today, specifically, I'm going to talk about six months into the inauguration of an international airport and a much awaited maiden flight. So, welcome to the program. Welcome to the flight, rather. Six months after inauguration, Pokhara International Airport received its first international flight from China on Wednesday. The lake city known for its scenic beauty and hospitality offered the guests. Those guests included the participants at the Nepal-China Dragon Boat Race scheduled at the Feva Lake on Friday. A hearty welcome. The Lake City offered a hearty welcome to all those guests. The landmark touchdown at the airport has offered a ray of hope for Nepal's economy as a whole. Let the pundits of diplomacy rack their brains over whether it was fitting on the part of Chinese ambassador Chen Song to reiterate on the occasion the same old line that the airport is part of BRI, that is the Belt and Road Initiative. This allows us to delve a bit more into more pressing concerns, more cons pressing concerns regarding the airport and its viability and its overall impact on the local, regional, provincial and the national economy. This at a time the economy is not in the pink of health. Half a year into the inauguration and a maiden flight later, let's reread part of the $215.96 million loan deal. That is almost $216 million loan deal between the Civil Aviation Authority of Nepal and China's Exim Bank. This financing made the construction of this airport possible in the western parts of Nepal. Of this loan with a repayment period of 20 years, 25% is interest free, while the remaining amount has a 2% annual interest rate attached. This means the airport has to start earning right away, something which is easier said than done.
while the scenic airport on the lap of picturesque hills and snow-clad peaks keeps looking at the sprawling city of Pokhara and much viewed for international airport, international flights, political leaders and bureaucrats of Nepal seem to be twiddling their thumbs. Remember, this is the very crop that goes out of the way to fast-track projects, bothering not even to conduct in-depth viability studies of such projects. As the airport continues to stay idle, remember it has been staying idle for six months except for some domestic flights, regular domestic flights. It is an international uh, airport, so it is supposed to handle international flights. So this airport remains pretty much idle, continues to stay idle for six long months, while it should have started earning right after its inauguration. So it will be timely to ask as to what the government particularly the federal government has been doing to promote this airport in international markets. Has it been using diplomatic channels to encourage international airports to operate flights to and from Pokhara? As it has become stark clear that stargazing isn't an effective way to bring business to this new airport. This, even though it is located at one of the world's most popular destinations, one of the most popular tourist destinations. As I told you earlier, Pokhara is the gateway to the Annapurna Himalayan range, uh, then whole lot of ranges like Nilgiri Mountains and then the Muktinath uh, Temple. The Feva Lake is located at the heart of uh, Pokhara. Then there are other water bodies like uh, Rupa, Begnas, whole lot of scenic spots there. So it is uh, heaven on earth in itself. It is home to uh, trekking, popular te trekking destinations like Pun Hill, Ghodepani, Birethati, etc. So there is no dearth of attractions. There is no dearth of factors that can bring in tourists, tourists to Pokhara. Uh, at this, uh, in this context, the airport is one more like it has it can be used as one more means to draw tourists to Pokhara, international tourists, high quality tourists to Pokhara. But the government does not seem to be doing much to promote this gem of an airport uh, in the international markets. While the Chinese diplomats' uh, latest BRI claim has helped keep the controversy about this uh, BRI alive, it has also shown, most probably, the northern neighbor's willingness to make this project a huge success. Also on the rough weather is the Gautam Buddha International Airport in Lumbini, developed with financing from the Asian Development Bank and the government of Nepal by mobilizing Chinese contractors. For want of shorter and more uh, cost-effective flight routes, this airport, the Gautam Buddha International Airport, hasn't been able to attract international airlines. Our government seems pretty comfortable with this state of affairs. Even as the burden of one more foreign finance project 
even as the burden of one more foreign financed project keeps increasing on the taxpayer. Lumbini, the birthplace of Sakyamuni Buddha and several other lesser Buddhas like Krakuchanda and Kasyapa, is the ultimate pilgrimage of peace loving humanity. Ambassador, the Chinese ambassador's remark is perhaps an indication that his country's international prestige is somehow attached with these uh, airport projects, that is, the Pokhara International Airport and the Gautam Buddha International Airport, located on the birthplace of the Sakyamuni Buddha and several other lesser Buddhas. The government should approach the northern neighbor and request it to send in guests and make these projects a success. In the long run, the government should expand its diplomatic outreach to bring in guests from around the world. That's too little to ask from the practitioners of the art of the impossible, isn't it? With this remark, we have come to the end of this edition of Soft Talk. Uh, this presentation has drawn quite a lot from the Annapurna Express editorial published in Friday's edition, that is June 23rd, 2023 edition of the Annapurna Express Daily. We request you to subscribe to this channel, comment on our presentation and press that like button as a mark of encouragement. Your support means quite a lot. It will go a long way in promoting citizen journalism we have that we have been practicing through this channel. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening.